John. A raven came from the citadel. A white raven. Winter is here. Well, I hope we don't get any error codes. Hi everybody, the cold weather's just around the corner so we're back with another Chinese diesel heater video for you and this time we're covering tried and tested heaters that we recommend. We've been doing this in blog post form for the past three years but this year we're going to do something a bit special and do a video version as well. So we can go into more detail about each heater. As usual we're going to cover many different sizes, styles, shapes, models, functions, budgets, qualities and accessories supplied in the kits. So hopefully there's enough information here for you to find your ideal Chinese diesel heater partner. And there's even some surprise changes this time around with some of our past favourites not making it to the list at all. Like the Tricklicks that were really good for years until they changed their controller to a pretty useless one. And Vivo, who we still really like. However, trading standards seem to have a bone to pick with them over a few lines of info missing from their instruction manual. Have you ever heard the expression, don't throw the baby out with the water? Well, trading standards haven't. I'm kidding. But they did season reject around a thousand imported Vivo diesel heaters late last year, which were perfectly fine. Because the bath water stank. So although the heaters themselves are perfectly safe and a decent budget option, we won't be recommending them this year for obvious reasons related to the install instructions. We also have some newcomers making it to the list for the first time ever. And a few familiar names that you might recognise from our previous list with some new technology for the tech heads. Why won't this bloody thing work? Um, because that's the stapler. So first off, what size do you need? 2 kilowatts or 5 kilowatts? So basically it all depends on your specific circumstances. What you want to use it to heat, how you'll be using it, and a bit of personal preference. The bigger the space you want to heat, the more powerful heater you'll need. You're going to need a bigger boat. If you have a car derived van, short wheelbase van or a medium wheelbase van, a 5 kilowatt heater will be way too hot, even if your van isn't insulated. So the best option for you is 100% a 2 kilowatt unit. However, if you have a long wheelbase van, extra long wheelbase van, or a box Luton style van, a 2 kilowatt heater would probably be powerful enough. The only problem is that you would need to run it on full power a lot, and this gets really noisy as the pump ticks more often, the fan has to run faster, and the combustion air intake will be sucking air in so fast it'll sound like a jet engine. So not only is it loud inside the van, it's loud outside the van too. It'll also use up your battery and fuel pretty fast as well. For long wheelbase vans and bigger, we recommend a 5 kilowatt unit. Run quite low to cut down on the noise and the fuel costs. Also, with a 5 kilowatt, you should have no problems keeping the inside of the van warm, even on the coldest, snowiest days, with vents or windows open for fresh airflow. And that is a must with these heaters, as they produce dry air that'll dry your skin, hair, and throat out quicker than this geezer gulping the wrong grail. <laughs> If you're getting one for a shed garage or any other building, we recommend a 5 kilowatt every time. How do we tell the difference between a 2 kilowatt and a 5 kilowatt heater? Some sellers are sneaking and label their 5 kilowatt heaters as 2 kilowatt heaters to sell more, as 5 kilowatt units are much more abundant. Oh! They use all sorts of tricks, from labelling them wrong to using photos of 2 kilowatt heaters and sending the wrong units that are marked 2 kilowatts to 5 kilowatts. Obviously a 5 kilowatt heater is capable of producing 2 kilowatts of power when turned down low, but that's not what we asked for. Sometimes they list 5 kilowatts with a photo of a 5 kilowatt heater and just list it as 2 kilowatt without mentioning the 5 kilowatt anywhere in the listing at all. And sometimes they only put 2 kilowatt in the title and hide the 2 kilowatt to 5 kilowatt somewhere in the listing, so you don't really have any comeback on it. Now, to you, I am dead. So it's important you know how to tell them apart, and luckily there are a few very easy ways. The first is the actual physical size of the unit. The genuine 2 kilowatt units are much smaller. The next is the position of the exhaust manifold on the bottom. On a genuine 2 kilowatt heater it is smack bang in the middle of the heater, whereas on the 5 kilowatt heaters the manifold is slightly to one side and not dead centre. And the third and final easy way to tell is the size of the ducting. 
The 2 kilowatt heaters have a diameter of 60 millimeters and the 5 kilowatt ducting is 75 millimeters. So knowing all that, let's have another quick look at Mr. Liar's heater. First of all, the exhaust manifold is off center. Liar. Next, the length is 38 centimeters. Let's see how that measures up against our guides. Liar. And finally, that's way too big to be a 60 millimeter duct. Liar. This is what a 60 millimeter looks like. And this is what a 75 millimeter looks like. <laughs> you might also see heaters that are labeled eight kilowatts. These are pretty much just five kilowatts with eight kilowatts labels whacked on them. But a few of them do have some differences, so might perform differently. We haven't had any of them yet, so we can't say for sure, but they do come with a slightly larger body, bigger dose pump than the five kilowatts unit, and they do have a ducting size of 90 millimeters. We will get some to test out soon. We are skeptical because we've seen what a true 8 kilowatt would look like and they are nowhere near big enough, but we would love to be shocked. Now then, standalone or all in one? These heaters come in two different types. The standalone type or the all in one type, and it is very important that you choose the right type. We've made a video on this that goes into all the details about that. You can check it out here. But the long and short of it is the all in one types are dangerous to install in vehicles because of the way they are built. If you want one for your van, please only install the standalone type. For more info about this, please again watch our short video. If you want to heat a building, shed, etc., then the all-in-one heaters are okay for you, and a good option if you don't want a permanent install, or the option of moving them where and when you want to. You just have to leave them outside and run a piece of ducting into the room you want to heat, so the exhaust remains outside. However, if you want a permanent install on a building, then I would consider just getting the normal standalone type. They come with a fuel filter and a much longer wiring loom in the kit, which you will need. You want the controller in the same room as you are heating for the thermostatic function to work correctly. And the all-in-one heaters only come with a very small cable for the controller, so it would 100% need to be extended. For overland vehicles, rooftop tents, etc., we highly recommend the briefcase style for convenience, as once it is built up, you just need a battery connection, and it's good to go and easy to store when not in use. Just be careful not to leave it out if it's raining as the controller isn't waterproof. You can even get these awesome little shelves that hook on your wheels to keep them off the ground when needed. Quality. Just the last few details before we get into our recommendations. The control panel and motherboards are much more important than you think. Some are really good with lots of useful features, some are pretty awful and just allow you to turn the heater on, off, up and down. We really don't recommend getting an uncommon one, except with the specific units. This we will explain as we go. The universal type motherboards have many more functions and can work with any of the universal controllers, giving you more options if you want them. We'll start with our basic recommendations as these are by far the most popular unit for the majority of camper vans and the type that can be found on eBay and Amazon that you've heard so much about. When someone says they have a Chinese diesel heater, this is the standard that they're talking about. They are nice and cheap to buy and all spare parts to fix them can be easily found and at a dirt cheap price too, if you know where to look. We'll then move on to better quality units that cost more and have more functions and better quality accessories. With the majority of units we'll mention in this video, the prices fluctuate throughout the year. The cheapest time to buy is the summer and the most expensive time is the winter normally, as they whack the prices up when the stocks are getting low. Another weird thing you will notice is with the basic units, the 2 kilowatt units are normally more expensive than the 5 kilowatt units. This is because the 2 kilowatt units are in higher demand. This is also why people lie in the listings about the power output. This isn't the case if you order direct from China though, but the shipping time is sometimes over a month. We'll post links to all of our recommendations in the description below, so you can find them easily, and if you can find anything much cheaper in China, we'll post two links, so you can decide whether you want to spend more and get it quickly, or spend less and wait. Right, with all that out of the way, here are our recommendations. For our basic 5 kilowatt heater, we're going to recommend H Calories basic unit. As we said earlier in the post, ever since we started writing our tried and test diesel heater blog posts a few years ago, we've always recommended the Tricklix unit, but this year we can't because they've changed their controller to one we don't like. It doesn't have many features at all, and it's very basic. This H-calorie unit is basically what the Tricklix used to be before changing their controller. A decent, good quality unit with a universal motherboard, control panel and a basic accessory kit. Sis, what's this doing here? That can't do the job. You mugging me off. So let's start with the most important things, the controller and motherboard. 
Like we just said, they are the universal timer, and this means they have quite a few features. Timer. The timer lets you set a countdown timer for when you want it to come on and off. Clock. The clock obviously lets you see the time. Kind of handy with the timer. Thermostatic mode. Thermostatic mode means you can set a certain temperature and the heater will try and keep it as close to that temperature as possible. It has constant power mode, which most people using their heaters to heat a van will want to use, as it lets you set the power you want it to run at until you tell it not to. For more info on the difference between the two power modes, please check out our video, where we cover it in much more detail. With the universal controller, you can control the constant power mode very precisely with about 25 different settings, as you can set the exact hertz rate of the pump from 1.4Hz to 5.4Hz. This also makes it possible to work out exactly how much fuel per hour you are using, and that can be very important to some people. I can't afford to turn it on, can I? Hidden menu. The hidden menu is very important on this motherboard and controller for a few reasons, but the main one is that they don't automatically sense your altitude like some of the newer controllers. So if you live at a high altitude or are travelling at one, you'll need to get in and change your fan and pump speed to adjust the air fuel ratio. This is due to the lack of oxygen, or the reduced oxygen, should I say. Oh, there's the hash brown. Anything above 1500 metres would need manual adjustment and mathematics. Links in the description. This controller doesn't have Bluetooth, but it does come with this remote control and most people are happy with that. In fact, this works out very well for some people because if you have a permanent Wi-Fi connection in your van, you can get yourself one of these Broadlink RM Pro Universal Remotes and you leave a remote control in the van at all times. You can use the internet from anywhere in the world to turn your heater on, off, up or down, if that's your type of thing. Links in the description. All in all, it has a decent motherboard and controller with lots of videos about how to use it online, and you should have no problem getting help with how to use it. As you can see, we've made loads of videos on it ourselves, and we highly recommend them. The final thing we will mention about this motherboard is that it is compatible with the Afterburner controller that has been very popular in the past. So if you wanted to upgrade your controller to the Afterburner from down under off of somebody called Ray, this is the best budget 5 kilowatt unit for you in the UK. H calorie heater bodies are also decent enough as they go. We're not going to go into too many details about this as they are basically all the same when it comes to the basic units. And this leads us to the very basic accessory kit. But I have a few bits and pieces we recommend upgrading. If you do buy this kit, the accessories are good enough for most. However, this kit comes with the dreaded fuel line that we talk about quite often that gives people nothing but troubles. Please see our error codes videos for more info, but to boil it down to a simple statement, it causes a lot of error codes. So we always recommend swapping that out for some rigid nylon fuel line to save yourself a lot of hassle further down the road. As usual, links in the description. The only other thing we recommend changing from this kit is the fuel filter. They're very low quality and can crack or leak. We recommend upgrading to one like this, that can be mounted to something and not just dangle. Has a water separator to stop water getting into your pump and rusting the insides, and can be taken apart and cleaned when needed. Links in description. And finally, the instruction manual is well written with good English and has everything you need to know and can be found online too if you ever need it. Links in the description if you want to check it out. Our next recommendation will be a basic 2 kilowatt unit. This is much harder this year after the whole Vivar debacle. Flying into the target area, the Wildcats detached from the main body and began circling the cargo ship. In previous years we would always recommend the Vivar 2 kilowatt unit. Denied! It didn't have a universal controller or motherboard, but it had the next best thing, and that was a non-universal style with more features than most. But as they had lines of text missing from their instruction manual, the trading standards decided to weigh on everybody's conflicts, and now not only has it made it hard to get basic 2 kilowatt heaters in the UK with decent functions, it has pretty much started a shortage and prices have gone right up. So your options are, buy a heater that is exactly the same as a Vivo heater, but unbranded from somewhere like AliExpress for about 100 quid or even lower sometimes, buy one pretty much the same but UK stock for much more money, or what we suggest to do is buy this one, the Max Speeding Rods 2 kilowatt unit. And the reason we suggest this one is they have a better accessory kit than most other basic heaters. Better as in quality, because they've upgraded quite a few of the bits included, and also better as they have added some extra bits and pieces you don't get in other kits. Okay, so the first thing I'll say is the motherboard and the controller are not the universal type. In fact, they're far from it. They have this weird connection that no wiring looms you can buy online can accommodate, but we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, what have they upgraded? 
They've upgraded the exhaust pipe to a much better quality kind that is less brittle and a lot easier to bend to the position you want it to. It also reduces the exhaust noise a bit better than the cheap kind. Well, not reduce the noise so much, but it doesn't make extra noise like the cheap type, as with the heater running they give off a tinny noise for some reason. This type doesn't. They've also upgraded the fuel filter to the type with a water separator that can be mounted. Just a small upgrade, but it will save you effort, as normally the fuel filters that come with the basic heaters need upgrading, as they are brittle and are notorious for developing leaks. The upgraded type can also be taken apart and cleaned very easily when needed, and can be bolted or screwed directly onto something to keep it in place, safe and out of the way. They've also changed the air ducting and the combustion air intake hose to this stuff that looks like cardboard. I'm not sure if it's an upgrade or not, as the previous stuff looked like it would be much more weather resistant, but nevertheless they've changed it. It does seem very strong and robust though, so maybe they are onto something. What have they added that you don't get in most other kits? First is a good one, and that is a fuel pickup pipe standpipe, whatever you want to call it. This is a very good thing, as the nipples supplied with all the kits <laughs> can leak over time, and as you have to fit it yourself, depending on how well you do it, some can leak a lot quicker than others. The best option is to go through the top of the provider tank with a pickup like this, so there isn't any chance of the connection developing a dripping leak. For more info on how to fit either the pickup or the nipples supplied in all kits, please check out our videos here. They've also included some exhaust wrap in the kit, which will come in handy for some installs, especially ones on buildings where people might brush up against or touch the exhaust pipe. Don't get me wrong, it will still be hot, but it won't instantly adhere to your skin and burn you. And finally a pair of gloves that are really just a token gesture but quite cool anyway so thumbs up for the gloves up. Everything else in the kit is basically what you get with every other basic unit on the market. One thing you probably will want to change in this kit though is again the soft green fuel line. Upgrade it to some nice rigid nylon line with an inner diameter of about 2mm then you'll be reet. Now we get to the heater body and as we said before we don't have one here to show you but we will try our best with photos. The heater body is actually slightly better quality than most basic units. They've upgraded the end cap that keeps the lid on the heater body and added some clips too. This keeps it much more sturdy than some of the other cheaper units on the market, so there's less chance of the fan rubbing against the casing and giving you an error code 6. Everything on the inside is still basic though, so just like the H-Calorie 5 kilowatt unit we mentioned earlier, it doesn't have a brushless motor, it doesn't have a double balanced fan. The motherboard has no waterproofing, so it isn't the best option for an exterior or underslung install. Oh, this coffee's too hot. And finally, we get to the controller. Like we said earlier, this unit does not come with the universal motherboard or controller, although that might be hard to see to the untrained eye. As you can see here, they both look very similar without power going to them, except for a few tiny differences in the icons, but when you plug them in, it's a completely different story. It's hard to find a basic 2kW unit with a universal motherboard, and that is for one simple reason. The universal motherboard doesn't really fit in it very well. The 2kW motherboards are quite a bit narrower, so they can fit in the smaller sized cases. So when it comes to the 2kW units, unless you go for some of the other units we'll mention later on in the video, you can't really get as many functions. These ones supplied with the max speeding rods units are very basic with basic functions and limited constant power settings. With this controller you can just choose from power H1 to H6, so nowhere near as precise as universal controllers supplied with 5kW units. It does have thermostatic mode and constant power mode though, so at least you can choose one or the other unlike some controllers that just have constant power. Give it some of that which is exciting for the ladies and gentlemen, you're inevitably going to hit some sheep. Unlike the universal motherboards and controllers, these ones can tell you the actual body temp of the heat rather than the green and red bars, so that's a plus. It does have high altitude mode, but only a very basic version of it. So there are no exact settings that you can change it to, as there is no secret menu where you can tune it up effectively. All in all, an easy to use but very basic controller. If you like things simple, it's a good choice. If you do choose this max speeding rods unit, the prices are pretty much the same everywhere. However, if you click through our link in the description to buy them direct from max speeding rods and use the discount code VANLIFEUK, you will get 10% off at checkout making it the cheapest option. And this brings us to our final basic heater recommendation, the all-in-one type. Now these come in all shapes and sizes, with all types of different controllers and boards etc, but when you get down to the bones of it, they're exactly the same as the 5 kilowatt standalone units. All I've done is taken one of the standalone units and put it in a case that can fit everything in to make it more portable. 
So for this we actually have two recommendations but they both have exactly the same heater body inside and that heater body is one we have already recommended. So again, for the basic all-in-one heaters, we're recommending the H-Calorie 5kW heater we did earlier, with the same universal motherboards and controllers that we've already recommended, but this time they're just in a cool looking case. The toolbox style, wow that looks swanky, and the tower style, that's pretty boring looking in comparison, both have the universal motherboard and controller that we talked about earlier, so we're not going to go over those functions again and bore you. Are you alright there, Fox? Help me! Links are in the description. But as you can see, everything is included with these heaters. On the tower style heaters, the tank is already hooked up and all you have to do is connect it to a power supply and you're good to go. But as the toolbox style are built to be more portable, you have to attach the fuel tank yourself, along with some brackets to hold the exhaust and air intake up out of the way of the fan. Once you've done that, it's up to you if you take it apart each time or leave it as it is and just empty the tank. What are you, a camel? <laughs> Also, with the briefcase style, we can tell you that the case itself is top quality and feels very robust and should take a good beating. The controller is on the outside so that might get damaged but they're very cheap and easy to replace because, say it with me now, they're the universal type. Without a doubt, these are the best two options for a basic all-in-one heater at the moment. Very good and very cheap, very good and very cheap. They do come with the green fuel line, but the length that you need to use it is so small it couldn't affect the functionality of the heater at all. If you feel like it, you can upgrade, but one thing you might want to add that not all-in-one heaters have is a fuel filter. As usual, links in the description. Okay, so that's the basic heaters finished now. We'll move on to the next level up. Well, when we say level up, it's not really, as they're still the same quality as above. They just have a couple of extra really handy features due to the controllers and motherboards. So the first heater in this category we're going to recommend only has one extra feature, but it's a good one. And that is this one, the 5 kilowatt Max Speeding Rods Bluetooth Heater. They come as a standalone or an all-in-one tower type and both have Bluetooth, so you can control it from an app on your phone. To some people this will sound like a very unnecessary upgrade as they use it to heat their vans and can reach the controller from anywhere. <coughs> but to others who are using them to heat buildings, sheds etc, this can be very handy and save you a lot of time and energy, especially if you're the type of the person that always has your phone in your pocket. You just download the app from the app store, there it is, it's called Parking Electric. Then if you can work out how to pair it, you're good to go. Get in. They also come with the same upgraded accessory kit as the 2 kilowatt heaters like the exhaust pipe, fuel filter and stand pipe. We will come back to that in a minute. But with this model they have also upgraded a few extra bits as well. They have upgraded their fuel lines to the correct rigid nylon type finally, so that's a big thumbs up. They have switched the pump for a quieter type that can be opened up to be cleaned. And they have upgraded the cable too with better quality connectors and added a protective sleeve. They've also added more length to it for the controller so you can have it further away from the heater, should you wish to. And they've also upgraded the fuel tank, well, sort of. They've added this little bit at the bottom which means you don't have to cut your own hole and fit the nip anymore. However, it already has a hole in it so you have no choice but to have the fuel connection at the bottom of the tank. Or you would need to find a way to block it up. So that brings us back to the standpipe. Why is it in the kit? It isn't the right type of the van's fuel tank. This is. So it's a useless part. But it's nice to have anyway in case you use a different fuel tank. So it's still an upgrade I guess. This heater also comes with all the added extras that the 2 kilowatt units come with. Like the gloves and the exhaust wrap. But again they've added another extra to this kit. That the 2 kilowatts don't include. And it's a very good one. And that is a glow plug and atomizer removal kit. At some point in time you're going to want to service the heater. And that means changing the glow plug and atomizer. And you do need special tools to do it. Buy this kit and they're included. It even comes with a spare atomizer. Then the rest of the kit is just the generic stuff you get in most kits because they don't really need upgrading. A few more upgrades for this year also include a heavier aluminium body than ever before, making it much less likely to break or crack. Not that that was ever a problem. And you can feel the weight difference to be fair. And one quite big and important improvement for this year is they have now been awarded a European e-mark. This means you will never get any complaints from your insurance provider as they are fully compliant to our rules and have proven it. This unit does have automatic altitude adjustments so you don't have to do anything. The heater will sense your altitude and change the air fuel ratio automatically. Nice. The motherboards and controllers on these heaters are not universal so if anything goes wrong you will need to find a direct replacement. So that would require going back to the manufacturer. 
Although they're not universal, that doesn't mean that the heater has basic functions. In fact, it has one function that none of the heaters we've mentioned in this video so far have, and that is vent mode. Vent mode gives you the ability to run just the fan to circulate air without the heater being hot, so it can effectively be used as a fan when needed. This is a bit of a non-feature for most people as they recirculate the air from inside the room they're heating to heat it more efficiently. So this means when you run it just as a fan, it's just recirculating air from the room anyway, so it isn't exactly fresh or cool. <coughs> what? Oh my god, because my f***ing you can however set it up to draw cool or fresh air from outside though, so the people who install it like this can benefit from it greatly in the summer. An ideal setup would be install one of these closable vents so you can draw cool air from outside or recirculate warmer air as and when you choose with no need to compromise. Links in description. What else can this controller do? Well it has a clock and a timer, so you can set it to come on or go off automatically if you feel the need to do so. It has two different power modes with a thermostatic mode and a constant power mode. Unfortunately, the constant power mode only has five increments, so it's not as precise as other units, but good enough. And the language can be changed if you don't speak English, to Chinese or Russian, so something for everyone, I guess. I know nothing. And that's about it with the controller. Oh no, it's not. Wait. It does come with a remote too, so with the controller, the remote and the phone app, there are three ways to control this heater. Well, four ways if you have a Broadlink RM4 Pro and a Wi-Fi connection, then you can control your heater from anywhere in the world, but that's one for another video. If you would like us to make a video on this, please comment below. Again, if you do choose the Max Speeding Rods unit, the prices are pretty much the same everywhere. However, if you click through our link in the description to buy them direct from Max Speeding Rods and use the discount code VANLIFEUK, you will get 10% at checkout, making it the cheapest option. So the next option has a pretty cool extra feature that a lot of you might find pretty useful. The unit we're talking about is the H Calloway Bluetooth unit with auto on off and Bluetooth. You might be seeing a theme up until now with the brands. That stops after this level and another theme will fall. So watch out for that. Again, these heaters are the same 5 kilowatt heaters that we've recommended twice in this video already. So you should be quite familiar with it. They have a few different model numbers that have these functions and the thing you need to pay attention to is the controller. So you can get them in the toolbox style, the standalone style and the all-in-one tower style too. So fit for pretty much any situation you can think of. So let's start with the auto on off function. What is it? It basically means that unlike any other Chinese diesel heater, when it reaches the temp that you set it to, the target temp, it actually turns all the way off until the temp drops below whatever you've set it to again. This is huge, let me explain. On other heaters, once the area reaches the temp you've set it to, it just turns down to its lowest power, and not all the way off. This means that in a well insulated space, the room is likely to keep getting hotter and hotter until it becomes unbearable. With this heater it would turn off completely and not turn back on again until the room reaches the minimum temperature you've set it to. This would save you a lot of fuel An extra shovel full of coal for the fire. and would also make the room much quieter. This is awesome and a huge bonus for all sorts of situations. However, this isn't awesome for a van though, especially if you don't have a huge battery bank or if you're not on a hookup site. Oops, I mean hookup point on a site. The glow plug firing up multiple times a day will drain your battery much faster than the regular heaters. So you would need a decent battery bank or to turn that setting off in the controller until you're on a hookup where you can use it freely. Another function that this controller has that none of the basic controllers have is that the controller goes to sleep when it hasn't been touched for a while. This should help you save some battery power, especially when the heater isn't in use. We can't work out if this heater has a high altitude mode or not. It does show you your altitude, so you would think it does, but we can't find it anywhere to adjust it. But if you do live at a high altitude, and or will be travelling to them often, I would 100% check this out with them before buying one. The controller will also tell you how much fuel you have left, and when you are running low on fuel. This is an awesome addition that pretty much no other heaters on the market have. All you need to do is tell it the size of your tank, and then it will work it out via the pump frequency. Very clever. And very cool. Again, I'm not going to go through all the bits and pieces about the rest of this heater as we already have earlier in the video. What we will say though is none of the accessory kit supplied with this heater has been upgraded at all and there are no added extras supplied. But you do get what you need and the bits supplied are good enough for most people and easily upgradable for those of you that might want to. Links in description.
Although the controllers and motherboards for these heaters are heater specific, they have been clever enough to release them for sale on their own. So not only are they easily replaceable if they go wrong, you can pretty much upgrade any other basic heater to a Bluetooth heater now for about 50 quid. We're going to make a video on how to do this very soon, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see how to do it. Next is a massive step up in general quality, and that is the Levana Pro original version. Not the Pro Max version, that is even more awesome, and we'll show you that soon. If you are looking for a decent quality, basic, easy to use Chinese diesel heater with second to none customer service and aftercare, then this is probably the best option for you. So where to start? Let's start with the heater quality. The heater body is a very clean cast and nice and strong as you would expect. The plastic outer case is much better quality too. The plastic is much thicker and more durable. I'm not even sure if it's the same plastic, it feels a lot better. Much less flexible. This will stop rubbing on the fan if anything presses against it, as will the clips and better quality end cap. All in all, much better quality all around. The fan is double balanced which is a major upgrade from basic heaters and makes it much quieter than the basic units. The motherboard has been waterproofed by conformal coating, so it has an IP rating of 66. This means it is the perfect candidate for exterior and under slung installs. You will still need to install it in a box, but water still gets in the box, so this will be protected well and not die on you. They've also upgraded the glow plug to it, so they don't just fail randomly like they do on the basic heaters. Don't worry, they only cost a couple of quid, so if you do buy a basic one, it's not a hard or expensive fix. But the point is, Levana have made it so it is less likely to randomly die young. Put on his glasses! <laughs> and finally, they upgraded the body's temp sensor to a Latron one. This means that if condensation gets in between the body and the sensor, the hot tub's too hot! you won't get a false error code, and your fan won't turn on and start blowing cold air. True story. So to sum that up, everything that they could upgrade on the heater body they did, and they did it in style. Next we will move on to the accessory kit, where again they pretty much upgraded everything that needed it. So the exhaust pipe is upgraded, it looks very much like the stuff that Max Speeding Rods heaters upgraded to, but looks can be deceiving. It is double walled, but the same quality as you get with the German Eberspracher and Wabasto units. I'm not going to lie, I'm not an exhaust specialist, but I do know the quality is much better, and you can feel it. Easy to bend and position, expensive to buy, must be good. The exhaust silencer has also been upgraded, and it isn't straight through like on the basic. But as I said before, I'm not an expert on exhaust, so I can't tell you why it's better. When it comes to exhaust clamps, however, I am an expert at common sense, so I could tell you why they are an obvious better quality upgrade, but I won't. I don't want to insult your common sense. Get out of it. The fuel line is the correct type and really good quality too, so no need to upgrade that. Or the fuel filter that can be mounted, can be taken apart and cleaned, and does have a water separator. The air ducting is better and thicker quality, so are the vents. I'll just save some time. They upgraded pretty much all the accessory kit too. They have also added a fuel pick standpipe like all the options from now on. This is the type for your van's fuel tank, not the tank supplied with your heater. The instruction manual is very well written by somebody who actually can speak English, with nothing missing from it, so no worries there either. Right, now then. Controller. Remember earlier in the post when we said it was nearly impossible to find a 2 kilowatt heater with a universal motherboard? Well this is the exception. These heaters come in both 5 kilowatt and 2 kilowatt units, and both of them have the same universal motherboard and controller. And because they are the universal type, they have all the decent functions like timer, clock, thermostatic mode, constant power mode, hidden menu, etc. They don't have an auto altitude mode, but as it has a hidden menu, it's easy to adjust manually. And they do have a model that does that, which we'll mention in a minute. This is probably the best of the universal controllers, and you get it with the heater without having to buy it separately. And obviously it comes with a remote too. It doesn't have auto on off or Bluetooth though, but these are not needed in the majority of cases, so that's fine with us. And the final thing we will mention about this heater before moving on to the next level up is the customer service and aftercare. Even just commenting in our Facebook group will get you a quick reply from them. Let's just say if anything goes wrong they are very happy and quick to help. With recommended filters, suppliers, repair people in the UK, they actually take responsibility for their heaters after the sale, unlike most. And that is probably why they are one of the only brands in the UK that has a genuine e-mark from the EU. We do highly recommend this unit, it's a good reliable unit for people that like to install themselves or have it installed professionally. Nothing needs to be upgraded and it even comes with a turret plate now too. You won't be disappointed. But now we're down to our final two recommendations. These two are a big step up in quality and functions. 
However, they are also a big step up in price. Still much cheaper than the Russian heaters that are now masquerading as Latvian to navigate Russian trade embargoes and the German models. So if you are looking for a budget setup, please rewind the video as these are not for you. However, if you want a top quality heater, check these out. The best of the best and the cream of the crop. So first is the Lavana Pro Max, or as it is actually called, Lava Max. And again it comes in 2kW or 5kW, so you can choose your weapon of choice. But you can only get these as standalone versions, not as all-in-one types. So if you wanted an all-in-one version, you would have to build one yourself. If only there was something on the market that would make that easy. Links in description. As you have just seen, Lavana heaters and accessories are very good quality. And this is the newest model that has been even more upgraded than the last model was upgraded even more than. So the heater quality is exactly the same. It might even be the same heater, but they've changed a few more bits on this one. The body temp sensor that they upgraded on their last model has now been upgraded further. So in the pro model they had upgraded the cheap basic sensor to a Latron one that could only sense the body temperature. This one can do that and also sense the air temperature too, which is handy. The motherboard has changed from a universal one to a heater specific one too. And they have designed their own controller so they've been able to add the extra functions that most heaters don't have. For example, the double sensor I just mentioned, and vent mode. That's right, this heater can also be run in vent mode. Like the 5kW Bluetooth Max Speeding Rods heater, this can be used to blow cool air too. This heater however has 9 different power levels, so you can adjust it more precisely if you need to. That's a handy feature. The new controller also allows you to program it to come on at specific times. Yes, most controllers have a timer setting that lets you set a countdown timer for the heater to come on and then go off. However, the controller doesn't remember it and you need to set it every day. This controller is completely different. First, it doesn't have countdown timers at all. This controller lets you set specific times you want it to come on and has five memory settings too. God only knows why they didn't do seven while they were at it, but I digress. It's a good amount of timers. Another cool function they've added is a standby mode to the controller. This means it isn't lit up like a Christmas tree 24 hours a day like the cheap heaters. With the old style controllers, a lot of people complain about how bright they are, especially at night when they're trying to sleep. But the more annoying thing is that they will drain your battery over time if you forget to unplug the controller when the van isn't in use. The Levana controller not only goes into sleep mode when you haven't touched it for a while, it doesn't have a load of bright LEDs everywhere, so it will save a lot of energy and not do your head in at night when you try to sleep. Although this controller is labelled smart, we can only assume it means clever as it doesn't have Wi-Fi, and no matter how hard we tried, we couldn't download any apps onto it. Computer says no. Nah. <laughs> The Pro Max is also Levana's Alpine version. Although the Pro version has a secret menu where you can manually adjust the air fuel ratio if needed, it doesn't do it automatically for you. This, the Pro Max version does though, and automatically adjusts your air and fuel depending on your altitude, with the 2kW version being able to function up to 3000 meters, which is about 10,000 feet, and the 5kW version being able to function up to a whopping 5500 meters or 18,000 feet. They've also upgraded some of the bits in the accessory kit again, including the exhaust silencer. Again, we're not experts on exhaust and don't claim to know the reasons and effects, but it certainly does look top notch. The wiring loom has been upgraded again, obviously for a reason this time. The extra wire for the upgraded temp sensor would have needed to be added and adjustments would have needed to be made to handle other features and also to accommodate the new controller and motherboard. As with their pro versions, the cables are oversized, so there is no chance of them getting hot and starting a fire if fused improperly. But with the Pro Max version, they have also covered it in a protective sleeve that will help protect it from getting damaged. You will also notice that the wiring loom has two fuses, one for the heater itself and one for the controller. The fuel pump connector isn't already attached, so you can poke the cable through small holes before wiring the connector on. That is a really nice touch. And the cable that goes to the controller has been extended too, so you can have the controller further away from the heater without having to extend it yourself. And the other connectors have been upgraded to much better quality ones too. And the final thing they've upgraded is the remote for the controller. This is much better quality than the cheap flimsy kind and looks much more for sophisticated too. More like a car key than a novelty from a Christmas cracker. They've also added a few good things to the kit that you don't get in many other kits too. First is a fuel pickup, so that's good. Pretty standard for the better quality units, and like the pro version, this is the type of pickup for your van's fuel tank, not for the tanks provided with the heater. 
As most Lovanas are installed by pros that know what they're doing, hooking them up to the van's fuel tank isn't much extra work at all. Some vans use different methods to do this though, so you might find it redundant and have to buy a specific kit. The next thing they've added is huge, and nobody else does it at all. They've added a turret plate to the accessory kit. And if you are installing these in a van, 95% of the time you're going to need a turret plate. So this will save you having to buy one separately. It does have a kind of small collar on it, so it won't be good for people with lots of insulation on the floor. They may need to buy one with a larger collar, but hey, it's a good gesture. The next thing they've added is some exhaust lagging. This is good if you want to install it near anything you don't want to get hot, like your van floor for example. And finally another great thing they've added is two, yes two, service kits. So that is both the gaskets you will need if you have to take your heater apart to clean it or service it for any reasons, times two. And the two glow plug meshes that need replacing if you take them out. So that should give you a good few years without having to buy anything but fuel, with all the top quality upgraded parts like the glow plug. There's nothing in the accessory kit that we would say needs upgrading really. It's as good as it gets pretty much. Well saying that, we do have one more option to show you, and they really have got all out. And that leads us nicely onto our final recommendation. And that is the HLN Aerolin heaters, and they come in 2 kilowatts and 4 kilowatts version. Yes, that's right, I said 4 kilowatts, not 5 kilowatts. If you cast your mind back to the start of the video, I mentioned that the 5 kilowatt heaters are actually only 4 kilowatt heaters. We know this because they are copies of the German ones that are only 2 kilowatts and 4 kilowatts. So, not only is this our most highly recommended on the list, if quality is your thing rather than basic, it's the only one on the list that has had the common courtesy to call a spade a spade and actually state that their heater is a 4 kilowatt. You win! So why is it our most recommended on the list? Let's take a look shall we? First of all, it is the only OEM Chinese diesel heater manufacturer. HLN provides their original diesel heaters for top manufacturers of trucks, construction vehicles, engineering equipment, buses and vans. Their products are pre-installed on vehicles sold and operating in the EU, Asia Pacific and Americas. So that means they have been certified by the Economic Commission for Europe and won an E-Mark. So that makes it the third heater on the list with the European E-Mark, but the first that is an OEM brand. What's an OEM brand I hear you say? OAM means Original Equipment Manufacturer. So for instance if you drove an old Nova SR you might have noticed when changing parts, rather than the parts having Vauxhall written on them, they had General Motors on, as the OAM was actually General Motors. Well it's the same thing here, but with diesel heaters. No other Chinese diesel heater brand can brag about that. But what else is good? It is the only one on the list with a brushless motor, and this makes a huge difference to the amount of noise it makes when running on higher power settings. The Levana has a double balanced fan and that helps with noise, but this one has two, so it cuts down on noise even more. The accessory kit is very well thought out and we'll show you why in a minute. The unit itself is slightly smaller than all other 2 kilowatt units, so it can fit in slightly smaller spaces, which is very handy for van lifers, as we're always trying to stick it in somewhere we shouldn't. The fuel pump is the quietest we've heard so far. And finally the new controller they're developing now that won't have Bluetooth, but will have Wi-Fi. Nice. Making it the most advanced controller supplied with Chinese diesel heaters so far. This will mean that you can control your heater from anywhere in the world. Without one of these, links in description. As long as you have Wi-Fi near your heater. It's already been designed and made and we've been told it will be available in about a month's time, as of the 10th of October 2023. Yeah, there is the afterburner controller, but A, it's ugly, B, it's expensive, and C, who wants the extra hassle of ordering something from the land down under from a bloke called Ray when you can get one with your heater? Fair play, their controller isn't available yet, but it's coming very soon. So maybe when you're watching this, it's already being supplied with the heaters. If not, just wait a few weeks. It's not rocket science. So what about inside the heater? Well, it's pretty much exactly the same as inside a Levana heater. The body temp sensor on this heater is also the same upgraded version as the Levana Pro Max, so it can not only sense the body temperature, but also the air temperature too. It has the same upgraded Kyocera glow plug as all the Levana and German models. The body and case is top quality too, just like the Levana heaters. The motherboard is also weatherproofed, so perfect for installing underneath the van. The HLN motherboard has a metal top, whereas the Levana has a plastic one. We're not sure what is best, but we can only observe that it's different. And that brings us on to the accessory kit. The first thing in the kit we think is better and we've already mentioned and that's the fuel pump. It's much quieter and therefore in our opinion much better. 
The noise difference is about 20 decibels, and that is huge. The next thing we really like is the wiring loom. First of all, it's really long. The longest yet. Look at her! This is very useful if you have a long vehicle. They have also oversized the cables, so they're nice and thick too, so no chance of volt drop or fires here. They've also added a protective sleeve to protect the cables, but instead of the mesh stuff Max Speeding Rugs and Lovana used, they've decided to opt for plastic conduit, so it's much more durable and will be much better at protecting your cables underneath your van, if that's where you're installing it. They've even added some conduit to protect the top quality fuel line too. You can't argue with that. The exhaust and combustion air intake are both pretty special as well. Very good quality. They both do a much better job reducing noise than these ones. Let's start with the exhaust pipe. Not only is it top quality double walled exhaust pipe, but it has its silencer integrated into it. This is awesome as it can be a ball ache finding a decent place to mount the bracket for these exhausts underneath the van. These are much easier to attach. It's also much longer, so no matter where you install a heater, you will easily be able to reach a safe area at the edge of your van so the fumes will escape into the open and not just pull underneath you. They've also designed the air take in the same way too. It's very robust with a nice solid metal piece on the end for attaching it to the heater. The others we've tested so far were like tying cardboard to the heater. This type will 100% keep it safely attached. The air filter is integrated into it, again making it much easier to install and giving it no chance of falling off. But the big thing about this air intake is, it really does make the heater a lot quieter than the generic ones. With the generic ones they have little plastic slots on the end that all the combustion air gets sucked through, and boy do you know about it. It makes the heater sound like a jet engine and sometimes gives a little whistle. With this you do still get some sucking noise, but just a fraction, and we think that other manufacturers should pay attention to how these have done things. Apart from those bits, the whole kit is again pretty much similar to the Lovana kit, well apart from the heating duct. So this is the Lovana Pro, pretty hard that. On the Danny Dyer scale that's about a Phil Mitchell. Vivo next. <laughs> Feeble! That's an Ian Squeal Beal on the Dyer scale that. And the HLN? Wow that's Grant Mitchell that. Super Army Soldiers. You win. As you can see I'm visibly shaking. All top quality with no need to upgrade anything. You might want to add a few bits though. So first, these heaters don't come with fuel tanks. They assume you will tap into your vehicle's fuel tank, like all the vehicles they've installed them in OEM. So you would need to shell out about 10 on a fuel tank. That being said though, it comes with the correct pickup for a separate fuel tank. So you would need to buy a kit from Butler Technique if you want to fit it to your own van's fuel tank. It doesn't come with a turret plate either. However, for the majority of van builds, you would need one with a bigger collar than the one supplied in the Levana Pro Max kit anyway. So this isn't a huge problem. It doesn't come with exhaust wrap, but most people don't need that anyway. And it doesn't come with a self-service kit, but only the Levanas really ever do. And this is a standout from the crowd situation. Finally, again, the downside. The parts for these heaters cannot be found anywhere except HLN, but again, that's not really too much of a big downsize, as they are a proper company with proper contact details and a reputation to keep. So again, they have awesome customer service and will always be willing to help. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our recommendations and the end of the video. Let us know in the comments below which heater you would go for, or share any experiences with these heaters with us, positive or negative. Links for everything we've mentioned in this video are in the description below. They are affiliate links, but clicking them won't cost you any extra, it just helps pay for us to make more content. If any of the links don't work, as these heaters do sell out fast, just comment below and we'll try and update them as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. We are Van Life UK Complete Survivor's Guide. If you liked, please subscribe.